Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. Thanks for coming over and watching another project. Um, this project was inspired to me by a demo I watched with Les Vaughan down at the Plymouth Woodturners. And um, it just got me thinking that there's a lot of different scopes and texturing and colouring that I can do on this particular project. So what I thought I'd do is, I've only been back a week or so, so what I thought I'd do is have a go at it and do it as a video. Um, I will in the future be doing it as a live as well, but with a video I can spend a bit more time uh, talking about what I want to do and demoing or try, trialing out different texturing techniques that I want to try on it. So what I've got on the lathe is a piece of uh, red pine, um, piranha pine. Um, it's an old staircase newel post, uh, 95 by 95. It's generally about 200 mil long. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to get this round because uh, that's where we need to start to be. So we'll go to the lathe, get this round, and we'll move on from there. So I'll see you guys over at the lathe. So, like I said, we've got a piece of uh, piranha pine, 95 mil by 95 mil, roughly about 200 mil long. It's not very square cut there. That's where I cut it off of the old staircase, but um, we can get rid of that. So, what I want to do is I want to rough round this. Um, I'm going to be using the rough and gouge because it's spindle uh, work. We're going to be using the rough and gouge or spindle rough and gouge to get it rough round. And then we can put a, a mortise on each or mortise on this end. Uh, then we can start making it as in pieces. Um, I'm going to try and explain to as I go along. I'll try and find a, um, a picture of what I'm trying to make and stick it up this corner here. Um, and if I can find one, great. If not, then obviously this area will be blank. So let's get it roughed um, and go from there. So with spindle work, with a bit of speed, and we're just going to run our rough and gouge over to uh, obviously get rid of the edges. Right, so our piece is round. So what we need to do now is we need to put a mortise on the end. So I'm going to be using the uh, a parting tool. So we're going to get a mortise on here that we can So what I want to do is, because that's not very square on the end there, I just want to try and trim that up a little bit. Just like that. So now we've got our fixing for our mortise. No, it's not a mortise, that's a tenon. So now we cut our tenon, we can get that in to the chuck. Going to bring our tail stock back up just to make sure we've got a good support to start with. We've got a good fix. Bring the tail stock up, do it nice and tight. So, we're going to do some shape now. So, what we need to do is this is going to be our top. And what we're looking for, the shape we're looking for, is a, 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 like a, a sort of bell shape. So something like that, really. That's the sort of shape we're looking for. Um, so obviously this is going to be the top end. But I want it so it's hollow inside, obviously, to keep the weight down. So what we're going to do is on this end here, which is this bit here, we're going to make our insert. So about six to eight mil wide. And we're just going to turn a slice down. We're going to clean that down, turn a slice down for our insert. And then... Um, I suppose this is a bit long, really. I could take a bit of that off. But this is the first one I've done, so I'd rather keep it longer than short. So um, so we're going to... We can take the tail stock away once I've got rid of um, some of this meat off of here. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna, first thing is I'm going to cut my end. Um, so we need to clean this end up. 
Just square it up. Much better finish. That's a much better finish. So now we need to do our width or our depth for what we want. So let's just use this one. I reckon about there. Just take a little bit more of that off. And then we're going to come in behind that. Bring it a little bit wider. So then we're going to come in behind that. Right, so I've just put a pencil line there just so we know roughly where that should go. So I'm just going to give that a quick clean up. Just move the tail stock out of the way. So I've got to just going to quickly clean up a bit of sandpaper. 120. Now this piece we're going to keep natural, we're not going to actually colour this piece. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of sand and seal on it. Just put some sand and seal on it. And we're just going to put a bit of wax on it. So we've textured that all the way off. So we're just going to sand and seal that again now. What I might do, I might just put a little bit of gill cream in there. Or embellishing wax, whatever you want to call it. Just to enhance that grain a little bit. So let's go for um, let's go for a little bit of gold. Just put a little bit of gold embellishing wax in there, just to enhance that. Just like that, so just enhances that little bit of texturing up. So there you go, just enhances that little bit of texturing we did in the bottom there. So what we need to do is part that off, and that's our base. So we need to keep that somewhere safe out of the way. I'm going to be using a thin part and tool just to clean this off. Oops. And hopefully without dropping it. Just like that. Without dropping it, he says. So that's our base. As you can see, a little bit of texture in. Don't matter about that little nub in the bottom. That's going to be on the inside. You're not going to see that. Um, so yeah, there's our base. So we need to keep that to one side out of the way. So what we need to do now is um, this needs to be. We need to make get our rough size for our base to fit into. So so that we can finish the shaping 
of our outside we're doing the inside first and then we're going to do the outside afterwards which is uh, normally i do it the other way around but um we're going to try it this way so just put these away so we need to clean this nib off first i'm using a spindle gouge just to clean this out Right, so what we're going to do now is just clean that out. So I'm going to use a parting tool just to. I only want to go about the depth as what my uh, base is. So we'll just try that. So we're now making a recess to put this into. We want it so that's a nice fit. So I just want a little touch more, not a lot. So we'll just try that. And I've gone a little bit deeper because this edge needs cleaning up. that will do now i've got to get it out oh man that was a silly idea oh stanley blade so just gonna get a stanley blade and then try and pop it out just like that so that's the size we want so what we're going to do is we'll clean this out and then we can trim this up to the depth we want afterwards. So we're just going to carry on back feeding this with the uh, spindle gouge. on a camera that you can see it help those give me that transition line there just get rid of a bit of this
it it's a bit more delicate. So, let's get this mark where we're going to park it. Pass it about there. Not like that, I'm not. Just come out and slipped her and caught that edge up. So we've got to titivate that to make that better. Just need to leave a little bit of that off there. There's our shape. This is the top, this is the bottom. So what we need to do now is we need to give it a bit of colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, let all the dust out of it first. So first things first, I'm going to give it a little bit of, oh no actually I'm going to, I'm going to uh, colour it first. So it sounded up to 400 grit. So I'm going to colour it with one colour and I think I'm going to go, uh, let's go red, let's go flame red, let's get some gloves. So I'm using Hampshire Sheen flame red. Give it a nice coat so we get that deep red. I'm going to part that off because the reason being is I really want to do that in one piece rather than messing around with the top later. So let's just get this part off. So, watch that. And they're not doing it too tight because obviously that will split. So we'll get this end finished now. Let me get that colours all at the same time. So we're just going to go gentle. Um, we need to be pushing in because obviously we don't want to be um, too much stress. If that's going to pull it off. Definitely from the inside. So what we need to do now is in here, we're going to put like a little 
I know tear drop or whatever is a like a little plunger or lid so we just need to drill a little tiny hole in there just so we can we've got something ready to push it in on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a uh, 3.5 mil bit I'm just gonna put a hole in there so we're sanded got a hole so what we can do is just color that piece so it matches the rest Just give us another coat. So we've got a nice. So while that's drying, I just want to put a little bit of texture in on this side. Um, so I've got two choices. I can either use um, the Robber Sorby texturing tool. Uh, so we can just run some lines like that or like that. But I think that's going to tear it out a little bit if I do that. So, uh, or. Um, no, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some lines in randomly and we'll put some lines in between them. texture in there as you can see so what we're going to do now is just put some definition lines on them and I'm going to use um, carbide pointed tool just to put a little bit of a definition line either side of them Give it another coat of colour. So I should have really coloured it after I textured it. Right, so let that dry come back and uh, sand and seal it. So I'm going to put gold embellishing wax over this to keep in situ with the uh, with the uh, bottom. But first I'm just going to denib it, take any rough bits off of it. embellishing wax. Got a little, the reason that's got a little bit low there is because there's a bit of a dip in there with the grain softer. But it's a piece of soft wood, so. But this is all a test, ready for the live, so. So there we have our shape and our texture. We've got, I don't know whether that's part of the grain or whether it's, whether it's not quite been sanded enough there, but. So we'll get our base in now. What we should get is when we push this in, we should end up with a nice 
transition between the colour and the actual bit at the bottom, which we have. So we've got a nice transition line between the colour and the natural piece in the bottom. So I just need to make the little bit the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pen blank and I think I'll use a piece of dark wood just to do that with. So I've got a pen blank here. I'm just going to put in a chuck, clamp it up nice and tight. Just so we can uh, turn this end piece. First things first, want to get it round. So there we go, a couple of little things I would change personally. Um, this is all from memory from what I saw from Les's demo. It's been over a week now, so it's not quite fresh in my head. But I would I would definitely make it hollow it out a bit thinner. It's still a bit chunky on the sides. Um, admittedly, it gets rid of a lot of that weight. I'd definitely do another one in hardwood. The With the softwood, you, you get some flat spots when you're sanding where the soft grain is. So um, hardwood is a is a definite. Um, this I'd make bigger. This doesn't seem to be in proportion with the the bit I've rebated out. That really should be a bit bigger in my eyes, or this should be smaller. But other than that, I'm happy with it. We use the flame red intrinsic and the gold embellish and wax, all both by Hampshire Sheen. And then we did a little bit of texture in the bottom there. So anyway, I'm happy with it. Just a few little things to modify on. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please smash that like and share button. If there's any questions, leave me a comment. Or if you like it, leave me a comment. If you don't like what I've done, then please leave me a comment. Just let me know so we can change the content of the channel to help improve it. So anyway, guys, thanks for coming over. Take care. Speak to you soon. And bye for now.